Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm going to make a quick little video, uh, as I do this one, on the newer GM, GMC, uh, gauge clusters. When you have your uh, displays, your digital displays go out, it's a pretty simple fix um, to do yourself. I haven't covered this, uh, I don't think, yet in a video, so what we're going to do first is um, start by taking off the front cover. Um, leave the rear one on. Uh, front cover cover comes off just by pushing down these little tabs with your fingers. Couple on the bottom. Just push them in and pop the front cover off. The reason why I tell you to take the front cover off first is because once you loosen the back cover, um, the gauge is actually the board will actually move around and it makes it a little bit uh, more difficult to mark your gauges. So what we want to do next is we just want to turn all the gauges to their stopping point. And uh, I usually just take a picture of it, but what you can do is mark your needles where they're at, at zero. So when you put them back on at zero, you know you're in the same place. Um, I went ahead and just took a picture of this one, so um, it's not an exact science, just get them back on as close as you can but I've seen people put masking tape so they know where to stop the edge and then pretty much on the needles all you're gonna do is you're just gonna once they hit their stopping point uh, just lightly counter uh, clockwise turn them and then pull as you're turning and uh, they should just come right off so we're gonna turn that pull it comes right off so take all those off once we have the needles off um, and your faceplate is marked we're going to go ahead and take the back cover off and I'll uh, show you what you need to fix it. Okay, um, all the needles are off and uh, we're ready to take the top cover off and then just put your fingernail, little clips, and then just pop each one loose all the way around to get the back cover off. A couple on the sides. And it'll pop right off and uh, the reason why we leave the back cover on instead of the front one is because once you take the back cover off the board will actually move and that'll throw your needle points off in the front so um, take the front cover off I don't know if you can see through there but you'll see how they can actually move and it'll be a little bit easier to mark them if you leave the back cover on so once the back covers off um, we're gonna go ahead and find the problem Let's see if I can't show you and we'll find it on this one the problem is going to be this little MOSFET right here. Um, there's a MOSFET uh, and a 101 ohm resistor right next to it. Usually the resistor is fine, but this MOSFET will quit working and it's going to kill both of your displays. So I have the replacement here. This one actually doesn't physically look too bad, but most of the time um, you'll see them and they'll be uh, popped or burnt. You'll have to clean the board a little bit, but I'm going to reset up the camera. I'll show you how to replace that and we'll go from there. Okay, so now we're down to the MOSFET. Um, grab your tweezers and the way I like to do it is with the hot air gun at about 380 degrees. And we're just going to warm it up. Not too close. We don't want to uh, knock all the resistors off the board again. I'm just going to warm it up. And as soon as we hit the right temperature, it should come right off. All right, got it up to temperature. Um, once it's warm enough, I had to pause it there. It's taking a little bit longer, but better to take your time than to rush it and uh, mess something up on the board. So, yeah, it's about ready to come off. There we go. So now we have it off. Uh, move it over 
here. You can see there's the old one. I have a new one already ready to go. And if you're wondering, the part number on it is um, an LL2705. It's um, You can find them on Mouser or um, eBay, stuff like that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to clean these uh, solder pads up real quick um, on the board. Let me grab my uh, solder wick. Got the solder wick here. I just want to clean it up. Sometimes these MOSFETs will get hot, so you can take a little rubbing alcohol and uh, a Q-tip to clean the board. This one's not too bad. Basically, we just want to clean it up. So we're ready to re-solder. All right. Um, looks pretty good. I'm going to grab some flux. We'll uh, put some solder on it and uh, get the new chip put on all right so next uh, i'm going to use a little bit of no clean flux just a tiny bit and i'm going to hit it with the uh, hot air gun just to flow it out a little and then i am going to grab some solder Put a little bit on the pads that we cleaned. Sorry, I'm knocking the camera all over. And then on the reinstall of this chip, I'm not going to use the uh, hot air gun. I'm just going to set it and use the soldering iron. After I pick it up off the ground. One second. All right. Try to zoom in a little bit. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to do this from behind the camera so you guys have the right view, and it's a little bit um, tricky, but we're going to set it on the board. Pretty simple. Put it into place. Once we have it set in place, we're just going to hit the back end to hold it, and then we are going to solder down the pads. Just like that, I'm going to grab our solder, a little bit more on the ends, make sure we don't have any cold joints. And that's all there is to it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a Q-tip and some alcohol. I'm going to clean this up. And then I'll give you a close-up view of what it looks like uh, soldered on, to, um, just so you know. And then uh, we'll put the cluster back together. All right, so there it is, um, all soldered back on. We've got a good connection. I went ahead and checked it with uh, my continuity tester. So now all we got to do is uh, put the rear cover back on first. So we're going to put this board um, back into the housing. Then we're going to snap the rear cover on. So that we got the board held in tight. And then um, for the needles, what you're going to do is just um, set them on there. Just barely set them on there. And then... Um, you should feel the stepper motor stop 
Uh, we're going to turn it back to where you would have had it marked. Um, roughly, you know, I, I looked at my photo. Stopping point, we're going to go back just a little bit more. And this one was right there. And uh, do that with the rest of your needles. Uh, make sure they're nice and snug. Don't push them down too hard and, and uh, pinch it on the backing plate. Um, you just want to put it on to where it uh, was before and just push it down far enough so that the needle doesn't come off um, down the road on you. And that's all you got to do. Uh, change out that little MOSFET, kind of clean up that area and uh, your display should be back up and running. So um, thanks for watching and I hope this helped you out. Actually, I had one more little bit that I wanted to add for you um, at the end of this video. If you have a power supply or anything that'll put out 12 volts and you want to be able to test it um, after you're done, I'll just give you a quick rundown of the pinouts. Um, all you have to do, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this one down. Sorry about the uh, camera in my hand is uh, on the top row pin one and pin five will be voltage and then on the bottom row uh, pin 13 and if you look close inside that connector I don't know if you'll be able to see it but they are labeled which end is which so the top row left side starts with one bottom row starts with 11 so pin 13 is ground pin one and pin five is power um, and then just connect it to any 12 volt source the two powers and the grounds and then your gauges should come back on and also um, once you verify that um, your display is working again, you can make sure that you actually have uh, all your needles at zero. So I'm a little bit off on this one from originally. I'm going to go ahead and move that, but uh, the rest of them should just rest uh, just below zero with power to it. So um, again, thanks for watching and I uh, hope this helped you out.